Hi everyone, I'm Jenny Lyles and this is Out of My Mind. Today we're going to discuss boundaries a little more. Um, so the title of today's piece is On Boundaries, Defining Boundaries. And today, instead of drawing a pretty picture, I'm actually playing with these nifty watercolor pens and some watercolors that I bought at Dollar General for almost nothing, so they're probably not very good, but that's okay. Um, what I'm going to talk about first while I'm trying out these pens and learning some watercolor techniques and how well these things work is I'm going to talk to you about the four kinds of boundaries that we experience. Oh, I kind of like that. We have material boundaries. We have physical boundaries, mental boundaries, we have emotional boundaries. Now those all seem pretty straightforward. I'm going to spend a little time talking about what each of those means. Let's start with material boundaries. Material boundaries are when somebody asks you to do something and you have to set a limit because you can't or won't do that thing. I kind of like that dry wet thing. I'm not sure. There you are. That's kind of fun too. Um, so what are you comfortable lending? So material things might include lending money, lending a tool, lending a book. You guys, I've told you before what my personal line with lending is, is that I consider lending a gift if I'm not comfortable with losing the thing I'm lending forever and still maintaining the friendship then I'm not going to lend anything because I don't want to lose friendships over that. Don't want people to damage your belongings. Like if somebody is going to use something of yours and you've given permission, they're going to treat it as though they own it and they have to replace it because frankly, they will have to replace it if they damage it. Just kind of playing with these colors. It's almost like finger painting except with these little brushes because all I'm doing is seeing what they can do. And this one seems to be really useful for some things. Now, you're also going to have limits on your time. Your time is valuable. I occasionally have clients at the very last minute tell me, I really want more time with you today. And I can't do that. I can't ever do that. Even if I don't have a person scheduled that particular day after my session, um, unless it's an emergency that I've judged as an emergency, I'm not going to give you that extra time because that's a boundary crossing. I am there for a certain amount of time depending on the kind of therapy you're getting. And you asking me to potentially take somebody else's time is a boundary crossing. You asking me to take my own time that I do things like notes with or returning phone calls or doing these videos is also a boundary crossing. So, and here I think I'm going to like this one. Oh, I do. Look at that. And so that's another thing that is a material boundary. Limits on favors, services, and labor. And those are actually two very different things because when you're talking about a favor, sometimes you're talking about, hey, could you talk to my boss for me? Or, hey, could you uh, reach out to your mother and ask for this thing or something like that, right? That's actually asking that person to use their influence for you. Whereas, hey, I hear you're a heating and cooling tech. I have a uh, refrigerator that needs to be looked at or I have an air conditioner that needs to be looked at. Those are things that they're asking you to do a service for them without pay and depending on your relationship you may choose to do that or not but if this becomes a frequent request it could definitely be a boundary crossing now i'm going to play even more i'm going to try to mix some colors here what happens when i mix it what a lovely purple this is just that red i just had a moment ago and it mixes very sweetly i like that um so Using your influence is definitely a thing. If you have a profession of any kind, if you have expertise in anything, pretty much sooner or later, somebody is always going to try to use that. I am a knitter, as you guys know, 
And when I knit, I often have people, hey, could you make this for me? Or, hey, could you make that for me? I set that boundary pretty tight by explaining how much it would cost. I say, okay, my time is worth a minimum of $15 an hour because we are in a living wage economy. So you're going to be paying me by the hour it takes for me to finish the project. Typically for a sweater, it's going to take, oh, say 10 to 15 skeins of a $6 yarn. So you're going to be paying me for the cost of that. And it typically takes me between 70 and 150 hours to finish the sweater. So we're looking at well over $1,000. Are you sure you really want me to knit that sweater? And I do that because if I've gifted you with a knitted thing, I want you to realize that that's a valuable gift. You know, if you value my stuff enough to ask me to give it for free, when you get it for free, I, I would like it to be appreciated. That's kind of hard. You know, and material boundaries, again, when we're talking about boundaries, we want to be appreciated. So if somebody doesn't appreciate what we do for them, we're less likely to uh, do things for them. Next, we have physical boundaries. These are pretty straightforward, but some of the applications of this we don't always remember. So one physical boundary is just personal space. And we're talking about our personal bubbles here. I wonder what the blue and the orange, hmm, they make an odd kind of brown. I don't think I used the brown last time. Anyway, so an odd kind of brown. So you got personal space, people have bubbles. And for most Americans, that bubble is approximately the length of your arm plus an inch or two. Most people don't want people they don't know well or don't trust within that length from their body. Oh, I like that brown. I also like this particular brush for smushing. This is a good smushing brush. Uh, touching. You should not touch a person without their permission. Um, this is generally a sign of attempting to dominate somebody. Somebody touches your hair without permission. Somebody touches your shoulder. Somebody reaches around and touches your lower back. Those are all boundary crossings. Don't let people do those and be sure to say, hey, hands off or something like that loud enough that any witnesses are aware that you did not <clears throat> agree to that particular touch. Also, who gets to touch me? Um, we often don't think about our children very much in boundary situations, but we got dear old Aunt Matilda who really loves pinching cheeks and hugging and kissing. And we got little Joey, and Joey does not like being touched and hugged and kissed. And he looks at Aunt Matilda, who you just adore, and he says, don't touch me. Now, all too many parents are going to say, oh, Joey, you're being rude. You let Aunt Matilda touch you any way she wants to. See, folks, that is setting your child up for problems later in life. When a child says, don't touch you, to not touch them, and there's no medical reason to not follow that request, then that child doesn't need to be touched, period. End of story. You look at Aunt Matilda and you say, Aunt Matilda, Joey decided he didn't want to be touched today. I'm sure he loves you, but that's not how he wants to express it today, okay? And Aunt Matilda is just going to have to get over it. Uh, how they touch you. Uh, a lot of people like being tickled. A lot of people don't like being tickled. So if you like being tickled, more on you, go ahead and be tickled. If you don't like being tickled and somebody keeps tickling you, that's abuse. So you say, hey, hands off. I don't like being tickled. Stop doing that. Somebody keeps going. That's a boundary crossing. Where they touch you. Uh, some people hate having their hair touched. Some people hate having their shoulders touched or having to be side to side and having shoulders touch with the person next to you. Some people hate having, hate having their hands touched. Don't touch people where they don't like to be touched. It's kind of pretty basic, folks. I wonder how this blue and black go together. Oh, that's a very black black when I use this brush. Uh, when they touch you, sometimes you're just not in the mood for touch. Sometimes you just had an argument with somebody and I can tell you one of the fastest ways to get me to explode all over again after I have just calmed down 
after an explosion. And yes, that was an ant. I just sprayed for ant, but this is Missouri in a very wet spring. And guys, there is no way to get rid of them. They are coming in out of the rain. So you are not going to want to be touched when you have just finished exploding and you're still kind of angry and somebody tries to touch you and calm you down, I can guarantee you will explode again. So kind of watch for that. Don't touch people when they don't want to be touched. And we can, we can go back and we're going to say this a couple more times. Well, let's remember ask versus guest culture. Keep in mind that some people read body language really, really well, while others do not. Um, I'm speaking um, specifically about people with autism, autistic people. They generally struggle with, with uh, body language and with tone of voice. And so if you know somebody isn't likely to get your body language, you're going to have to speak up and say, I don't like the way you're touching me right now. Can you please stop? Or I, I'm sorry, I can't lend you money, but please stop asking me. Those kinds of things, because if you don't ask, people have to guess and not everybody can. Now, from the other perspective, some people have trouble asking. They want people to guess because asking feels very dangerous to them because in their hat past, and these are usually people with trauma pasts, asking somebody had very negative consequences for them. I'm really enjoying playing with these pens. I'm going to do something productive with them later, but in the meantime, I'm just playing. So you're going to want to, whenever possible, stretch yourself to be able to accommodate either ask or guest culture wherever you can. Um, the final physical boundary is, of course, sexual boundaries. Nobody should be touching anybody in any way that might be construed sexually without explicit verbal permission when that person is able to consent, i.e. they are not intoxicated, they are not a minor too young to consent, they are not incapacitated through some means, they are not asleep. Anything like that. All of those are cases where consent is not possible. So do not have sex. Do not touch sexually. Do not kiss. Do not lick. Do not do any of those things that consenting adults enjoy doing with each other until you know the other person is fully consenting. And by fully consenting, I mean enthusiastically and, and excitedly agreeing to participate. Next, after physical boundaries, we're going to discuss mental boundaries. And we have four basic subcategories of that. I'm going to turn this a bit. You know I like to turn my papers and I'm going to try doing some different things with this pen. Uh, thoughts, values, opinions, and beliefs. Now, thoughts get interrupted quite a bit. Um, one of the prime examples of this is young ladies will be reading a book on a park bench or on a bus or in their backyard and some person generally older generally male but not always it's not always young women sometimes it's young men um, and sometimes it's older um, will come up and say what are you reading why are you reading that can you tell me about your book and I can tell you right now that almost nobody who's had that experience it has enjoyed it. Because when you're reading, you don't want to talk to people. You want to read. To read, to read. So they're asking for this person's thoughts. You know, tell me about this book you're reading. They're also asking for attention. So that's a piece of that. Um, what did you write if you write in a journal? Um, can I see your drawing? Now, can I see your drawing is actually a respectful way to ask because you're asking instead of just demanding an answer. Some people like to share their drawings. Some are very shy about them. I mean, I am making a basic scribble here with a big black blotch right there, and I didn't expect it to be pretty, so I'm perfectly okay with sharing this because all I'm doing is learning how each of these pens move and interacts with this paint I bought so that later on I can do something a little more productive with them. Uh, another thing is balancing uh, the guardianship of a child with 
there's with their ability to have privacy so you're always going to want to be careful not to invade your child's boundaries unless absolutely essential so work from earliest days to establish trust with your child such that your child is more willing to tell you when they get in over their heads give them space to say silly things on the facebook give them give them space to not want to share stuff with you give them space to believe that they're trusted even if sometimes you don't feel they're trustworthy values people get into each other's boundaries with values and here's two sides of that let's say you're in a professional situation or a work situation uh, sometimes it is a really bad idea to talk about things like politics and religion unless of course they are relevant to the job you are doing or you have established a relationship with that person that's significantly closer than just a coworker. Okay, you don't really, you want to be respectful of their boundaries about that. You don't want to get in an arguing, an argument about fundamental beliefs that may not be relative, I'm sorry, relevant to your work situation. Opinions. Again, let's not get in a fight over whether or not pineapple belongs on pizza. Um, if somebody has an opinion about something and it doesn't really matter, you don't need to argue about it. I loved Game of Thrones. I even liked the last season. So you guys may disagree with me, but arguing with me is kind of pointless because I like what I like and I don't like what I don't like, right? So that's values and opinions. Another way values boundaries sometimes get crossed, let's say you have a job and you have a coworker who loudly proclaims their particular religion by constantly bringing it up in situations where their religion has no place. Or perhaps even their lack of religion, where they're talking about how religious people are stupid or what have you. Um, bringing up those opinions in places where they don't belong is a boundary crossing. Talking about praying for somebody who has not asked for prayer and who has not is expressed that this is part of their worldview is usually a boundary crossing. I'm really enjoying this pen, I think, best of all of them. Beliefs, again, um, people's beliefs are their beliefs. It is the middle of Ramadan, I think actually towards the end, if I remember correctly. And uh, I'm not Muslim, but I'm not gonna argue with a Muslim who says, excuse me, I need to go pray. Or, um, I can't wait until sundown because I get to eat tonight and I'm really excited because we're having a really wonderful feast tonight. Those are things that are none of my business. And they're not telling me in order to convert me. They're just expressing, say, why they have to excuse themselves from my presence for a minute or why their stomach is growling. Now, next we have emotional boundaries. And these get crossed in relationships, especially abusive relationships, quite a lot. This is starting to turn into mud, folks. This is what happened when you put too many colors on top of each other. But I'm kind of having fun anyway, so I'm going to keep making my mud pie here. So you need to know where you end and I begin. So just because I like a certain thing, just because I feel a certain way about something doesn't mean you have to. And just because you feel a certain way about something doesn't mean I have to. My husband and I don't have to dis to, to agree about how we feel about various people in our lives. Some of us have strong feelings one way or another about people that we have to interact with because of our relationship. And that's fine. I don't have to be fans of everybody he loves. He doesn't have to be fans of everybody I love. That is part of a relationship. Separate identity. You are your own person. When you get into a relationship and that person tries to tell you who, who you can hang around with, what you can do on your spare time, things like that, that's a recipe for disaster. That is a good way to, to end in a pretty abusive situation. So be aware of your feelings. So when you're getting confused because you're in a relationship with somebody, this doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship, and you're finding yourself echoing everything you they say, take a moment or two and kind of figure out, are you echoing them because you're coming to agree with them or are you echoing them because 
their opinion has kind of taken over yours. At this point, I'm just spreading water to see how this finger paints on me. Be aware of your choices. Um, your choices are your choices, not anybody else's. So you have to think of them separate from other people's desires. Now, if you value a relationship, sometimes it's important to think about the other person's desires about your choices, but it's not the primary thing. You're going to want to make sure that you are actually aware of what your choices are and how much your choices are influenced by others. I'm going to go back to this big brush that I love so much. You are also responsible for your feelings, and I want to repeat that a different way. You are not responsible for other people's feelings. People's feelings are their own. Somebody says, you made me feel such and so. You look right back at them and say, that you need to take responsibility for your feelings. I can't make you feel anything. Your feelings are something you need to work out between you, yourself, and you. Because we don't have three tenses in English. Boundaries are a dance, not a fence. Um, they move. You're going to find yourself sometimes advancing and sometimes backing up. The other person is also going to find that happening, and that's fine. The problem is when you find yourself retreating all the time or you find yourself advancing all the time. At that point, you're not dancing, you're pushing, or you're not dancing, you're retreating. And that's not what you want in any relationship. That includes business relationships, friendship relationships, parent-child relationships, romantic relationships, even those, you know, relationships with the guy at the convenience store that you shop at regularly, right? We don't want to have those relationships be one-sided. Sometimes they're fairly minor, sometimes they're not, but we want to be aware of our boundaries. If you're alternating between sometimes pushing up and requesting more of a person and sometimes having them push back and request more of you, you're probably doing it just about right because that's how you want to do it. Now that's all I had to say about boundaries today. Uh, next time I will be talking about how boundary confusion is used in abusive relationships to gaslight people, and we'll get more into what gaslighting is in that particular video. Uh, I want to thank you all for showing up for my video. I am, I have completely revamped my Patreon membership tiers today, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm doing. I am going to be uh, adding some services at higher tiers. Some of those include, I um, will be starting a Discord server in July uh, because I need that long to develop the fan base to set it up. I will be uh, providing anybody at a certain level with short three or four uh, paragraph answers to their personal questions, and these will be private and confidential. I will be at another level engaging in small group talks that are more personal and less let's talk about the topics that were on the videos this week. And I will be at the highest level offering one-on-one, -on -one, one hour long life coaching and skills building sessions. Now all of these tiers are less expensive than the average cost of one hour of therapy and when you add them all together including the video time that you watch including time spent in groups time spent uh, chatting time spent communicating and writing it can add up to as much as eight hours a month so you're getting essentially the equivalent in life coaching of about eight hours of therapy for less than the cost of one therapy session. So if you really would like to get a little more out of these videos and the services I've offered, you want to go to patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S and see which tier works best for you. And again, I thank you very much and I will be back later in the week. Actually, it'll be Tuesday of next week with how boundary crossings are used in gaslighting and in the context of abusive relationships, including domestic violence. Thank you guys for showing up. I hope you like my scribbles and I hope you like what I had to say. 
and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.